Welcome to my channel, Sunshine Shoulders. I'm Calvin. I want to say good afternoon to my subscribers in the Philippines. A good early morning to my subscribers in America and beyond. I always give a special welcome to my new viewers and new subscribers. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. Your kindness, your generosity, your support of my channel has been truly amazing, and I'll never take that for granted. My channel is geared toward the new man and woman who's never been to the Philippines before, but who has a general interest in coming here. My almost 12 years of being affiliated with the Philippines doesn't make me an expert or a know-it-all. If I come off like that, I apologize. I'm just trying to be helpful. But it does give me a unique perspective, and I'd like to share that with you to make your trip here more enjoyable and, and above all things safer. I'm boots on the ground. Right in the center of all this is for your benefit. I live among the locals and I'm always gonna give you the nitty gritty. That's just exactly what I'm seeing, what I'm living, what I'm experiencing. I'm never gonna sugarcoat that. It's not gonna to start today. You know, I wanna talk about, uh, is the Filipino hospitality dead? I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of comments, you know, number one about, you know, how these women online are treating you, but more so than um, questions about this new generation, you know, raised up on Facebook, Instagram, now TikTok, you know, and Snapchat, uh, and their attitude toward foreigners. Uh, so it bears the question, you know, is the Filipino spirit dead? You know, I'm here to tell you, to assure you that it's not. This new generation, what they've done is they're used to seeing foreigners all the time. They grew up seeing foreigners, maybe somebody in their family's dating a foreigner, and that kind of gives them that, you know, oh, you know, it's nothing new to me, uh, you know, even though they still uh, respect you and they're still going to treat you kindly, they just don't, uh, they just have that, uh, you know, we're taking you for granted look to them, okay, even though that's not true. But the spirit still lives, and I, I'm going to give you some examples. And I can start right here in my own house, you know, uh, my girlfriend's mother, she's 65, and you can see the Filipino spirit in her. You can see that warm and welcoming spirit. I mean, she's kind, she's smiling, happy all the time. Will give you the shirt off her back. Has really dedicated her life to her children and her grandchildren. You can see that spirit. Uh, the other day, I went to a birthday party. A little ten-year-old girl. Uh, her grandparents were there. My girlfriend. It's my, one of my girlfriend's best friends. It was her parents, and I had met them before. One time before, last last year was at the the grandson's. Uh, birthday. It was the little girl's brother's birthday. And these people can't speak a lick of English, especially the man. But here's what this man did to me. He's 68. His wife is 67. The very first time, the minute I walked through the door and they introduced us, this man, he comes up to me. And remember, I'm a 57-year-old man. He comes up, he grabs my face like this, and he does that, puts his cheek on both sides of my cheek, you know, he welcomed me, man. I got emotional, man, I tell you. Um, he transmitted, even though we couldn't communicate verbally, he transmitted that warmth and that welcoming Filipino spirit that uh, that the Philippines is known for and the Filipino people is known for. Uh, and that whole time, man, I'm, I'm talking about this guy's from Canada on. He lives way up in the mountains, man. He's a hard worker. He's a farmer. His hands felt like bricks on my face. His feet looked like boxing gloves. They're so big and swollen, but man, I'm gonna tell you, you're talking about a beautiful human being, probably as kind of a man as, as I've ever met, man. And I'm not going over the top. I'm not being overly dramatic. This is the Filipino spirit that this new generation is riding on, see? This new generation, they're, they're really enjoying a reputation that they don't really deserve. They're getting it from, from this old generation. And I saw him again a couple of days ago. 
And it was the same thing, man. He can't. I was going to put it on film, man, but I didn't really know how to present it. I wanted you guys to see how this man and his wife treated me and treats everybody and can't speak not one word of English. Not one word of English does he know. But boy, does he treat me good. And he even welcomed me. He was talking to his son-in-law. He said, tell him that when all this COVID stuff is over and done, he wants me to come up in the mountains and visit him and his family, man. And I tell you, I'm here to assure you, man, that that Filipino spirit is alive and well today, man. This new generation, man, they're just they're spoiled, a lot of them. Uh, like I said, they see foreigners all the time. You're no big deal to them. Uh, they don't really appreciate what you're bringing to the country. You know, they're proud, they're nationalistic, which which is, and, and they should be, and, you know, uh, They've got the internet now, so uh, you're no big deal to them. But yeah, it, it's alive and well, guys. And I just want to let you know when you come over here, you're gonna see it, especially uh, the older folks. And that's why it's important that you meet the woman's family that you're coming to meet, because most of y'all are gonna meet a woman when you come over here. Make sure you meet the family, because you're gonna see how her parents react to you that's going to give you an indication of who you're really uh, dealing with. Because I'm going to tell you something, man. You know how they say, you know, the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. It's true over here. See, uh, because the young ladies whose parents, they got two daughters. They're about as kind and nice as you could possibly be. And they're the... The oldest daughter, I think she's 40, and I think the the youngest daughter, I think she's 31 or 32. And you can tell that they were raised by this, uh, by these two, by these two people I'm telling you about, the, the father and the mother. Because, you know, they're hardworking, man. The mother's face is sun-beaten, it's wrinkled. You know, she's an old-looking 67, but she's in great shape, man. You know, and this guy, I guarantee you, he could take me. He's 68. I mean, like I said, his hands feel like bricks. His feet look like boxing gloves, but uh, they've got that spirit, man. So come over here, meet uh, the parents. Find out who you're dealing with. Man, feel that warmth. Feel that welcoming spirit, man. I tell you, man, it, it reminds me of when I was little and what I used to get from my grandparents, man. And, and I'm 57. Uh, so yeah, that's still alive and well. Now, I just want to touch on something. A friend of mine, Sal from Chicago, he asked me, he said, you know, Calvin, he said, you're always talking about the Filipina leaving the man uh, and what the man does and goes through and everything. He said, well, what happens if you decide to leave? What if, what if, what if you... Uh, aren't interested anymore and you want to break it off he said what happens then and I said you know that's a great question I said you know in America she has no choice but to go her own way really they don't really know the system inside and out uh, and but over here it's a different story see especially if the woman still has uh, feelings for you because one thing about uh, Filipinas and Filipinos, man, you know, uh, they, they'll they seek revenge on you. You know, if you, uh, they're very sensitive, their feelings are easy to hurt, and once they hold a grudge, they hold it forever. Promise. They will never, ever truly forgive you. So over here, man, it's going to be tricky, but don't do all of this old crazy stuff that you See a lot of these other YouTubers and vloggers telling you to do, you know, replace the locks and all that. No, just talk to her straight up and just let her know as soon as you can. As soon as you feel that way, like, you know, uh, we're not compatible. Uh, it's not working out. You know, maybe we should go our own way. Let her cry. Let her emotions, get her emotions out. Listen, let her talk. And say what she wants to say if she's cursing you out or whatever because 
if you try this other sneaky stuff and running off and all that stuff, man, she can cause you problems over here. Big problems. And, and they're going to believe her before they believe you. Okay? But number one, man, that's why I tell you to proceed with caution when you meet these women. Don't commit so fast. Because if you commit, man, they're gonna take, they're gonna value your commitment. You know, so don't don't commit so fast, guys. And that's the big mistake we make. You can't blame the Filipino for that. You know, but we commit really, really fast. And so she commits. She's all in. See? So if you got any doubts, man, that's why it's best to kind of like, you know, let it play out a little while. You know, let that newness wear off. You know, kind of date the woman, so to speak, and get to know her. Go around her friends and family, you know, uh, vet her, you know, because if you wake up one day, man, and this woman done committed, she done put, it, put everything on the line. She's all in. She done took you around the family, around the friends. She's bragging. You know, she's happy. Remember those five things? She's exhibiting those five signs that she's in love with you, man. And then all of a sudden you say, oh, I don't think this is going to work out. Man, you, you might as well buy, buy you a plane ticket and go back home to wherever you come from. Because it's going to be trouble, man. You know, you're not going to be able to stay here. You're definitely not going to be able to stay in the same city or the same island. You're going to have to move to another island. And then depending on how big of a story she makes, that ain't even going to help because they'll hunt you down. And the minute you go to... Uh, Renew your visa, boom, there you are, they got you. See, so be careful, guys, you know, uh, proceed with caution when you come over here. You know, let her know right away, hey, you know, let's, let's get to know each other. Let's slow this down a little bit because this society is slow and methodical. It's not fast. Nothing moves fast over here. When she puts you on the clock like that, hey, slow down, you know, let me court you, you know. A little bit because once she commits man you know and you wake up one day and you say oh well you know I seen somebody else or you know we're not compatible and you know I, I you know I want more time to myself yeah you got trouble on your hands man so yeah Sal that was a good question and I just wanted to address it but you're the key Sal see don't commit so fast like 95% of us do we get off the plane, we see this beautiful young lady waiting for us. Uh, she's right out of our fantasy. You know, we commit. We've already been sending money, putting in layaway, putting on reserve. So then when we get here, you know, we've committed. And then you find out it's not what you thought it was. Okay, you know, you're not compatible. Because it goes beyond looks, guys, over here. Maybe the English isn't right. And then that communication gets in the way. Maybe she's had a bad relationship and she's bringing it over into your relationship. Whatever it is, you know, if you decide that, you know, you're trying to move on, man, you're going to have trouble, guys. So just take your time. And thank you so much. As you've seen today, if you go on my Sunshine Shoulders uh, Facebook page, I'm posting a lot of updates on um the repairs to baby Denise's house. If you'll see today, you'll see I bought a lot of supplies today for the roof and that upstairs. Because they're going to go on and start working on that, man. That is a mess up there. I'm surprised that that hasn't just fallen, fallen through. So they're doing that. I bought the roof and supplies um, and everything, man. You know, I want to give a shout out to A.J. Eckley down in Orlando, Florida. I'm just shouting him out. He asked me to do it. <laughs> no particular reason. He's just one of my subscribers. But everybody's help in this project, man. I'm going to tell you, pat yourself on the back because it's coming together. Uh, I'm going to tell you, we're, we're looking at a miracle right in front of our eyes, not only with our house but with baby Denise. And by the time we walk away from there, man, it's going to be special, guys. I, 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 I can promise you that. So if you're in America, it's late. Uh, some of you are already in the bed, but some of you are still out. You know, if you on one of them late grocery runs, beer runs, weed runs, you just get off second shift and you see somebody in the street, buy them something to eat, buy them something to drink, give them a couple of dollars. 
Because remember, we haven't gotten those $1,400 stimulus checks yet. And even when we do, man, we pay our bills more than once a year. That money's going to be gone. It's already spent. So we need each other, man. Okay, it's important that we help somebody today. If you're in the Philippines, it's about 12 noon, I guess. Somewhere around 12 noon. We still got about six hours to find somebody to help. Man, it's very, very important that we help somebody else over here. It's not a day goes by that I don't help somebody in some kind of way over here. I promise you that. Even if it's just myself, man. Because if I don't know anything else, I know this one thing for sure. When we help other people, we help ourselves. Take care, stay safe, stay COVID-free, and I'll see you next time.